Hello there and uh, welcome back. In this video I am going to show you how to create your own uh, stopwatch application using a Jetpack Compose and a Foreground and a Bound service as well. Now before we start I'm going to show you how this application will work. So this is our actual UI, so we have uh, three different uh, text elements and each one of those represents one uh, time unit. So hours, minutes and the seconds. Down below here we have uh, two buttons. The first one will be dynamically changed based on the stopwatch state and the second one represents a cancel button that will cancel our foreground service and reset our stopwatch. So whenever we press this uh, start button the foreground service will start and the stopwatch as well. So here as you can see we have a notification which is tracking that the same stopwatch time as uh, in our UI. Now of course we can uh, stop this actual uh, stopwatch either from the notification or from our UI, so it's the same. If I click this uh, stop button, uh, then this uh, button will change to resume and uh, our buttons here will also be updated as well, because we are tracking the same stopwatch state. Now even if I close or exit this application, like that, we will be able still to interact with our service. And now if I press resume, our timer or a stopwatch will resume at that same time and we can even press this notification to open up our activity. So that activity will now display that same time that we can see within our notification, because our activity is bound with our service. We can of course do the same thing or even uh, for example stop that and now we can cancel either from our notification or from here. So whenever we cancel this uh, actual uh, stopwatch, then our stopwatch will reset and our notification will disappear. There we go, now our stopwatch has been reset and our notification is no longer visible. Alright, so now uh, let's get started. Okay, so here I have uh, fully prepared the actual project. In this video I am not going to code, instead uh, I'm going to explain you step by step uh, the actual code that uh, I have already written. And I think that this approach might be more efficient with uh, these kind of videos where I'm showcasing the whole application. Because that way I'm going to waste your time a lot less and this video will be a lot shorter than it should be. Plus you are going to definitely learn uh, much faster. Now uh, let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about this uh, new approach of me uh, showcasing the whole code instead of uh, writing it from scratch. Also, uh, the source code of this project uh, will be available for you to check it out as well. Now, um, first uh, let's start with the actual dependencies that uh, I'm using for this uh, current project. So, uh, as you can see here, I'm only using one and that is a Dagger Hilt uh, library, right? So that's the only um, dependency that uh, you are going to need. Also, if we scroll uh, all the way up, you're going to see that we're going to need those uh, two plugins, so uh, Kotlin Kept and the Dagger Hilt uh, plugin as well. Now that's uh, everything you need to have in this uh, uh, Gradle uh, module application. Now if we check this uh, project level uh, Gradle build file, uh, then you are going to see only one dependency or a class path for a Dagger Hilt uh, Android the Gradle plugin, right? So that's uh, everything you are going to need. We can close that right now. Uh, so the next thing here you can see that uh, I have uh, created one application class for only one purpose, to actually add this uh, Hilt uh, Android app annotation in order to use this uh, Dagger Hilt uh, library, right? There you go, so uh, after you create this actual application class, uh, you need to add uh, one more um, attribute here in your Android manifest file. And that is this uh, first one. So after you create your uh, application class, uh, then you need to add this uh, name attribute in your application as well. Okay, so uh, in this Android manifest file, uh, you can see that uh, we have only one permission and that is a foreground service. Because we are going to use a foreground service in our application along with a bound service as well. So I'm going to show you a little documentation about the bound service for those of you who are not familiar with that kind of service. Uh, anyhow, also down below we have declared one uh, service that we are using this, uh, in this project. So that service is uh, located in this uh, service package and it's called the stopwatch service. I'm going to come to that a little bit later. And that's everything we have here in our Android manifest file actually. So the next one is our main activity, right? So let me just scroll uh, first to our own create function. And here as you can see we are just calling a one uh, composable function which is a main screen, right? And that main screen represents uh, this actual screen. Because our application will have only one screen, right? So uh, here I'm also using one if block to check if this uh, is bound 
property is actually true. So only if that's true, then we are showing our main screen. And that uh, is bound um, uh, just represents uh, one mutable state uh, of a boolean type, which is uh, dynamically changed whenever uh, this uh, on service connected or this uh, on service disconnected uh, function is triggered, as well as this um, uh, on stop function, right? So now you can see that the next property that we have here is our actual service, right? And here in our main activity, we are initializing that service and we are passing that service to our main screen, right? There you go. So uh, in order to initialize this uh, stopwatch service, uh, we need to use this uh, service connection, which uh, actually monitors the state of an application service. And after our service uh, is connected, uh, then uh, I'm using this uh, one variable binder to actually access a uh, one binder, which I'm going to talk a bit uh, later. And once I access that uh, binder, uh, then I'm using one of its functions, uh, get service, so that I can actually get the instance of that uh, service, right? And that's how I'm initializing this service. And of course, in that case, I'm setting this uh, is bound to true. Otherwise, I'm setting its value to false. Also, uh, in this uh, on start uh, function, I'm using this uh, bind service function where I'm binding my activity with that uh, stopwatch service. So the reason why I am binding this uh, service with my actual activity is because that whenever we uh, actually trigger this um, service and this notification, uh, that notification will show up here and our stopwatch will start, right? So even after we destroy our application, that uh, foreground service uh, will uh, continue working, right? And whenever we uh, click that notification to open up our activity, uh, then we are going to need to actually bind that uh, same service with our activity so that we can show and update our UI accordingly. So you will see about that uh, a little bit later. And uh, in this uh, on stop function, I'm just uh, calling this uh, unbind um, service so that I can actually unbind this uh, service or this connection that I have already created, right? And I'm setting this um, property back to false. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, bound service, uh, then you should check this uh, official documentation. So here it says that uh, a bound service is the server in a client-server interface. It allows components such as activities to bind to the service, send requests, receive responses, and perform inter-process communication. So a bound service uh, typically lives only while it uh, serves another application component and does not run in the background indefinitely. Now, a bound service is an uh, implementation of the service class that allows other applications to bind to it and interact with it, right? So to provide the binding for a service, you must implement the onBind uh, callback method. And that method is actually uh, located inside our service class, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So this method returns an iBinder uh, object that defines the programming interface that the client can use to interact with the service. And that's the exact thing which we're going to do, right? Now, also an important thing here to note, um, you can create a service that is both a started and bound. In this case, uh, we are going to use uh, both this bound service and the foreground service, right? So the purpose of this bound service is to actually provide the information from our actual service class to our activity, even after we destroy our activity, right? And that's what we are doing here in our main activity. So whenever we destroy our actual activity while our uh, foreground service is still running, and whenever we press that notification to start our activity once again, uh, then we are using that uh, bound service to actually bound that uh, service class with our activity so that we can provide those uh, same information to our UI, right? Uh, also, an important thing here to note is that um, if you do allow your service to be started and bound, uh, then when the service has been started, the system does not destroy the service when all clients unbind. Instead, you must explicitly stop the service by calling a stop cell function or a stop service, which we are going to do, of course. And here also it says that uh, although you usually implement either on bind or on start command functions uh, inside the service, uh, sometimes it's necessary to implement both. For example, a music player might find it useful to allow its service to run indefinitely and also provide binding, right? So that way an activity can start the service to play some music and the music continues to play even if the user leaves the application. 
Then, when the user returns to the application, the activity can bind to the service to regain the control of the playback. And that's the exact thing which uh, we are going to do with our stopwatch application. Alright, so um, that's all about the actual uh, bound service uh, for now. This is how our main activity uh, will look like. So basically, whenever we start this activity, we are binding that service with our activity. And also, we are providing this uh, instance to our UI so that we can actually get some uh, uh, values or the actual data from that uh, same service. Now, uh, the next thing, let me show you the actual uh, main screen, right? So in this main screen, uh, we are passing our stopwatch service. And uh, we are using that uh, stopwatch service to actually um, observe some of the values that we're going to use to actually update our UI. So we have uh, three different uh, units, like uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, but also the current state of our stopwatch. And I'm using those uh, actual values to decide how to update my UI. So the UI actually just uh, contains a couple of different text elements and the two buttons. So as you can see here, uh, we have a column. Inside that column, we have uh, three different uh, text elements, and each text element represents uh, one text unit or a time unit, right? So we have uh, hours, we have minutes, and uh, seconds. And after those uh, three texts, we have uh, two buttons, which are inside a row. So the first button uh, represents uh, a start button or a stop and resume button. So you can see that here I have created the logic to actually uh, update the text of my button based on the current state of my uh, stopwatch. So if the state of our stopwatch is started, uh, then uh, the actual text of our button will be stopped. Then if our current state is stopped, then the actual button will be updated to uh, say resume. And in else case, the button will say start. Also here, as you can see, uh, I'm setting the actual background color of this um, uh, first button. So based on its state, the button can be either red or blue. And of course, whenever we click that button, uh, we are triggering one uh, function trigger foreground service, which should just uh, start our foreground service. And that function is uh, located in this uh, service helper uh, singleton, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Now, um, next uh, down below, you can also see that uh, the second button represents the cancel button, right? So whenever we uh, trigger that button, we are also triggering this um, trigger foreground service function the same way as we did here, but only this time we are passing a different kind of action, right? So we have a couple of different actions. So whenever we uh, press this uh, cancel button, uh, then we are sending this specific action, which is called the action service reset to actually stop our foreground service and uh, reset uh, our uh, stopwatch uh, values. And in this case, whenever we uh, press or trigger this uh, first button, we are also triggering this uh, foreground service, but in this case, we are sending this uh, either uh, action service stop or action service start based on our current uh, state of our stopwatch. So that's everything you need to know about this actual main screen. And also one more thing, so here I have uh, created one uh, custom animation for our uh, text uh, that you have seen uh, right here in our uh, screen. So each one of those uh, text elements uh, will animate whenever the time passes. As you can see, we are calling this add animation uh, function within this animated content uh, composable function. There you go. Now let me show this uh, service helper uh, singleton, right? So this singleton is uh, quite simple. It has a couple of different functions uh, that are used to actually uh, provide or uh, specify the pending intent for our notification. So here I have described how to provide the, the actual pending intent for our click behavior of the notification. So whenever we click our notification, uh, then we should just uh, open up our main activity. And that's everything, right? So down below we have some more functions for a stop pending intent, resume pending intent, and the cancel pending intent as well. Now whenever one of those are triggered, uh, then we are launching our stopwatch service instead. And to that service, we are passing just a one string value, which represents the actual stopwatch state. So whenever we uh, press our stop button, then we are sending this uh, stopped uh, stopwatch state to our actual service. In other cases, whenever we press the resume button, we are sending this uh, stopwatch state uh, started uh, to our stopwatch service. And whenever we press cancel, then we are sending this uh, canceled uh, value to our stopwatch service as well. 
So you'll see about that. And the last function that I have here in this uh, service helper is this uh, trigger foreground service. So this is just a simple uh, function that actually triggers our uh, stopwatch uh, service, right? And to that uh, service, we're also passing an action, right? And based on that action, we're going to trigger a certain code within our uh, stopwatch service. Okay, so that's uh, all for our service uh, helper. We may come back uh, here a little bit later. Uh, for now, let me just show you this uh, uh, constants uh, object. So here I have just described a couple of different constants that uh, I'm using through this uh, actual project. So as you can see uh, here, just I have some uh, integer values for those uh, request uh, codes for our notification. We have some um, constants for our notification channel ID, channel name, channel uh, ID as well. We have uh, this uh, stopwatch uh, state and we have those actions that we are specifying to our service whether to uh, start, stop or reset. We can of course uh, rename this uh, action to actually say action service cancel. Let me just rename this to uh, cancel. There you go. Perfect. So uh, now I'm going to show you this um, uh, Dagger Hilt module which I'm using to actually uh, describe how to provide an instance of a notification builder and notification manager. So those two instances uh, will be used uh, within our uh, stopwatch service to actually modify and update our notification along with the stopwatch. So here, this is how our uh, notification compact builder looks like. So the title will say a stopwatch. Uh, a default content uh, or the text of this notification uh, will be uh, 00, colon 00, colon 00. So hours, minutes and seconds. Now this notification will have a, a one a small icon. Uh, so the next thing here, uh, I have specified this uh, set auto cancel, but we actually don't need that. So I'm going to just uh, comment out this uh, this line of code. And the next function that I'm calling here is a set ongoing, which means that uh, we will not be able to actually dismiss uh, our uh, our uh, notification by ourselves. So so our notification will not be dismissible by uh, by the user because whenever we start our stopwatch. Uh, then that notification will uh, stay up uh, here in our actual UI and uh, we will be able to cancel this notification only by uh, cancelling or uh, stopping that notification. Um, the next thing here, as you can see, I have added uh, two different uh, actions to our uh, notification. So we have a stop action and a cancel action. Now this first one uh, will be dynamically replaced with a resume action within our stopwatch service, right? So whenever we stop our actual uh, service, uh, then this action will uh, dynamically change to a resume uh, action and vice versa. And of course, after that, we have this uh, set content intent where we have specified uh, uh, that we want to open up our main activity whenever we uh, click our notification. So this is the actual place where we are calling those um, uh, pending intents function from our uh, service helper, right? As you can see here, uh, I have specified all those pending intents and uh, that's the whole purpose uh, basically of our uh, service helper uh, object to basically provide those um, pending intents without uh, crowding this actual uh, dagger hilt uh, module, right? And of course we have here our actual notification manager, so that's uh, all to it uh, for our actual module. And finally uh, we have this uh, stopwatch service. So let's open that up. So this is the main part and the brain of our actual application because from here we are uh, creating the whole logic to work with our stopwatch and to trigger our actual service. So this is just a simple class that uh, inherits from this uh, service class. Now first, as you can see, uh, we are injecting those uh, same types that we have described in our Dagger Hilt uh, module. So uh, we are uh, using a field inject because we are not going to inject those uh, two types within the constructor. Instead, we are using this inject annotation and we are injecting those two types as a fields. So um, as you can see down below, I have also created a couple of different variables like this uh, binder, which represents our uh, stopwatch binder. And this uh, stopwatch binder is actually an inner class that I have created, right? So this um, actual binder uh, inherits from this uh, binder class. And this uh, binder class uh, will be used to basically get the instance of our actual service, of our stopwatch service, right? So that's the whole purpose of this uh, binder. And uh, let me just uh, show you here. So this binder uh, is actually 
called as a return type to this uh, on bind function. So this function is um, important and you must override this function whenever you inherit from this uh, service class. And this is how you satisfy the actual return type of this uh, same function. So just by providing this uh, actual binder, right? So we are initializing that binder. We are passing that binder to our actual on bind function. And from our main activity, with that uh, same binder and with that uh, same get service function from that binder, we are able to get the instance of our stopwatch service and access uh, all its data that we already have within that service. So as you can see here, uh, I have already created those uh, properties like this uh, seconds, uh, minutes, uh, hours and the current state. We also have some private variables like the duration and the timer. So let me just uh, show you down below first uh, how those uh, function actually works. So we have this um, start uh, stopwatch function which basically updates the current state of our uh, stopwatch. So whenever we uh, call this uh, start uh, stopwatch function, then the state of our stopwatch will be changed to this uh, started state, right? And this function is called uh, whenever we trigger our actual foreground service, right? So whenever we call this uh, action service start, uh, then we are uh, starting this uh, stopwatch function. And whenever we start this uh, stopwatch, uh, then I'm calling this uh, update notification function which basically updates our notification each second, okay? So this is that uh, on tick uh, lambda that I have defined here within this function. So we are using this uh, fixed rate timer um, uh, function, which will basically allow us to update uh, those uh, time units every second, right? So whenever uh, one second passes here, uh, then we are updating this duration uh, field. We are updating those uh, time units. As you can see, this uh, update time units function will basically just uh, update uh, those properties of this uh, service class, like, like those uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. So whenever uh, one second passes, then we are updating all those values, and we are triggering this uh, on thick lambda. And that on thick lambda will just uh, update uh, our notification as well. Now, we could also call this uh, function within this uh, start uh, stopwatch, so it's uh, your choice. Uh, anyhow, uh, as you can see, uh, this, in this intent action will basically be triggered whenever we uh, press one of those uh, buttons, right? So in our service uh, helper here, uh, down below, you can see that um, whenever we call this uh, trigger foreground service uh, function, uh, then and only then, we are passing that action to our service. And whenever we pass that action to our service, uh, then those uh, functions uh, will be triggered. So uh, that uh, trigger foreground service function is called whenever we uh, press one of those two buttons, right? So whenever we press a stop, resume, or start button, or whenever we press our cancel button. So we are passing this uh, action service stop, action service uh, start, or action service cancel. And whenever we press one of those buttons uh, from our actual UI from here, uh, then uh, this uh, code will be triggered, right? And based on which action we actually uh, pass to our service, we are either calling our start foreground service to actually start the foreground service, we are starting our stopwatch at the same time, or if we call this uh, stop uh, action service, uh, then we are stopping uh, our um, uh, stopwatch, and this is our function which actually stops the stopwatch, so we're just uh, cancelling our timer, and we are updating our current state to the stop state. Now, there are also uh, here uh, two different functions, like the a set stop button and a set resume button, which are called to actually uh, replace our stop button with the resume button and vice versa. So, uh, for example, whenever we uh, start uh, our actual uh, foreground service and we press this uh, start button, uh, then from our main screen we are triggering this uh, uh, trigger foreground service function and we are passing uh, this uh, action service start, right? And whenever we pass that action service start, we are actually calling uh, this, um, let me just scroll all the way here, we are calling this um, action service uh, start uh, when block, and from here we are starting the foreground service, we are updating our notification on each second. So let me show you here, so let's just click start, as you can see, immediately after that our foreground service has been started, we are updating our notification, and we see here a stop button, right? However, when I now uh, press, for example, here a uh, stop, then this uh, second block will be triggered, and we are going to stop our actual stopwatch, right?
However, we are not going to cancel our stopwatch and we're going to see here a still this the same number that we already see right there. Also, you will see the change that now this uh, stop button or the first button does not say stop, it now says resume. Because here we have also called this uh, function a set a stop button, right? And that uh, set stop button will actually change this um, stop button to a resume button, right? We can maybe change actually the name of this function to say uh, set resume button. And this one will say uh, set a uh, stop button. Okay, so now it makes more sense. Let me just rename all or, or replace those um, functions. So resume button and here set a stop button. Perfect. So now uh, whenever we uh, click, for example, here resume, uh, then our button here will change and update. There you go. So now here we can see uh, stop and we are continuing from that uh, same time right because we haven't cancelled our timer we have just uh, stopped or actually paused our timer however uh, now whenever we press this uh, uh, cancel button right here then we are going to uh, stop the actual foreground service we're going to stop our stopwatch but also cancel the stopwatch and reset all those values so press cancel as you can see now this notification uh, has disappeared and uh, those values are back to zero because this uh, cancel stopwatch function from down below will basically turn or replace this duration with uh, the zero. We are going to update our current state to uh, idle. And we are going to update those uh, same time units and reset them to zero, right? Now, um, now here you can also see those two functions uh, start and uh, stop a foreground service. Which basically just um, uh, starts the actual foreground service and uh, stops that service as well. Now, um, when we stop our actual foreground service, we are also cancelling our notification manually. And whenever we start our notification foreground service, we are also calling one function create notification channel. Because notification channel is important, whenever you are using an Android API level greater than this uh, O, which is actually API level of 26. And this is our actual update notification function, which just uses this notification manager to notify our same notification with that same notification ID and to actually update those uh, values by using those uh, same values like uh, hours, minutes and seconds. So this uh, format uh, time function is uh, just one function that I have created. So I'm using those uh, string values to format them uh, in this uh, specific format. There you go. Uh, here we also have some functions that we have already seen, so uh, set a stop button and a set a resume button, which we are using actually to just remove our action from our notification with that specific uh, index position. So as you can see, uh, every time we start our actual uh, foreground service, our first button uh, will be uh, either a stop or a resume button, right? And whenever we uh, click stop, then we are removing that uh, stop button and we are uh, adding here a new button right so in this case as you can see whenever we uh, press the stop button uh, then we are removing that uh, stop button and we are adding a new button to that same position but only with a different uh, name and with a different intent as well uh, and finally here we have this uh, enum class which just represents our uh, actual stopwatch state so there are four different states so idle started stopped and cancelled Okay, so uh, that's uh, pretty much it about this uh, stopwatch uh, service. So now you have seen uh, all the code that we actually have within this uh, actual uh, service class. Now I'm going to just uh, show you one more uh, function that we have overridden with this uh, actual uh, service, and that is this uh, onStart command, right? So in this uh, onStart command, uh, you can see that we actually have uh, two different WAM blocks, and each one of those uh, WAM blocks contain uh, three different cases, and uh, each case basically contains the same code. So why is that? Uh, well, first let me explain you uh, what's the purpose of this uh, onStart command function. So whenever we uh, trigger the foreground service, this is the function that will be triggered immediately, right? But also, whenever we uh, use one of those uh, functions from our service helper class, like for example, those uh, pending intents, as you can see here, uh, we are using that uh, pending intent and it's a function get service to actually trigger our service and pass some data that we are parsing on the other side, right? So as you can see here, we have uh, three different pending intents. So cancel, resume and stop. And whenever we press one of those uh, buttons, from our actual notification, uh, then we are uh, using this uh, put extra function 
to actually store this uh, stopwatch state and pass that state to our actual service. But uh, those three functions are not the same as uh, this function down below, okay? So with those three functions, we are passing this uh, extra string and with this uh, trigger foreground service, we are passing an action. And the main difference is because with this uh, trigger foreground service, we are actually starting the foreground service and with those other functions, we are basically just uh, sending some additional data to an existing and already running service. And that's why here we actually have uh, two different WAM blocks. So this uh, first WAM block is used to basically uh, retrieve those uh, strings which we are sending with those uh, pending intents whenever we uh, click one of those action buttons from our notification. And this uh, second WAM block is used uh, only when we actually uh, trigger our foreground service from our actual UI whenever we press one of those buttons like a start, resume, stop and cancel. And uh, that's pretty much it about this uh, actual um, stopwatch service. So as you can see here, we also have that uh, or those uh, variables which we are observing from our uh, actual main screen, right? So we can now, of course, launch this um, application once again. So we can uh, check out and see if everything is going to work uh, the same way as before. Okay, so as soon as we uh, click this uh, start button, uh, then this uh, on start command will be triggered, our foreground service will start, our notification will show up, and the stopwatch will start updating our notification each second, right? So whenever we press that start button, this uh, first um, uh, action service start uh, block will trigger. Uh, we're going to, of course, uh, display that uh, uh, stop button. We're going to start this uh, foreground service, uh, start the stopwatch. And whenever we press, for example, this uh, stop, but uh, not from the notification, instead from our UI, uh, then this uh, second block will be triggered, right? However, if we click that uh, stop button or resume button from our notification, uh, then this uh, first when block will be triggered, right? So all those buttons or action buttons are handled within our first when block. And those buttons within our UI are handled within this intent. Now, uh, this uh, code right here uh, can be improved, but uh, nevertheless, uh, the whole point uh, of this uh, video is to actually show you how you can uh, create a simple uh, stopwatch application within your uh, Android application, right? And now, of course, we can uh, close and exit our application like that. We can now press resume. Our stopwatch will resume. We can now open up uh, our actual activity by pressing this notification. And as you can see, our UI will immediately update because we have bound that uh, service with our main activity. And from our main activity, we are passing that uh, actual service from which we are observing all those values that we have specified right here. So hours, minutes and seconds. And of course, the current state, which is used to actually uh, either hide or display uh, those buttons down below and uh, update our UI. So we can, of course, now click uh, stop from here. We can even uh, cancel now uh, that uh, either from here or here, so it's up to you. Everything works the same, basically. So only if we press a cancel, uh, then we are going to reset this uh, stopwatch and uh, actually close this notification, right? There you go. Our notification has disappeared and everything here works uh, perfectly fine. So I hope that you have enjoyed watching this video, uh, me explaining you how I have actually created this application. I didn't want to uh, code myself while uh, recording this video because uh, this video would take uh, too long, even uh, more than one hour. However, with this approach, I have saved you a lot of time because I was uh, focusing on explaining you uh, all those parts of this application so you can understand uh, even better how we actually build this application. So uh, feel free to comment down below and tell me what you think about this application. Also, be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. And uh, see you in the next one.